Well, Angela joins us now. Welcome. It's lovely to Thank meet you. you. Um, it's utterly fascinating. I mean, we all have an obsession with true crime and there's a lot of documentaries out there on screen. But what's so fascinating about this one is that it's told from the side of forensic department, which is not one we often hear. No, exactly. And I mean, one of the reasons for wanting to talk about it was to make sure that people did understand what real forensic science was about. So they understood when it went right, when it went wrong. Um, and, and so I thought it was high time. That... Mm -hmm. Well, we, we see a lot in um, TV dramas of the police investigation side and some forensic side. But these are these are uh, departments mm. that run sort of side by side, separate investigations doing their work. How accurate is it, the portrayal that we might have of what we see <laughs> on telly? Well, I mean, I, I don't want to be too critical because, you know, obviously it provides great entertainment, but it's not got much to do with real life. And one of the first things to say is, and I've just been reminded about it, it's not just one, one scientist, it's not just me who's done all this. Mm. There's a fantastic team of people and different teams for different cases, depending on what's required. Um, and so that's all very different. It's much more subtle. We work very closely with the police when we're investigating something, you know, that they're, that they're uh, interested in. Uh, we, and we have our separate, even if we do our separate investigations and use our scientific tools where they'll use other mm -hmm. tools, but we absolutely continue to meet constantly and talk to each other constantly. When you're learning, um, when you're sort of studying and learning and progressing mm -hmm. to, to go on to do a job like this, I guess mm -hmm. there comes a moment when you're sort of, you're reading it on paper and then you actually physically got to do it. And your first case, your first murder case, where you actually went yeah. onto the scene was in 1978. And this was a, a murder committed by the Yorkshire Ripper. I mean, that is an extreme thing to see. How do you know how you're going to react in that situation? Well, you don't, and you just hope it's going to be OK. You hope you've got a strong stomach and, you know, and you don't discover till you're there. Yeah. Um, but in that particular case, obviously, it was extremely high profile. It was a suspected yeah. Ripper um, victim. And not only was I worrying about whether I was going to appear professional enough and answer the questions, you know, right, that the police might have, and they descend on you and obviously ask you a lot of things as soon as you arrive. Um, but I was also, it was the first time I'd been to a scene, I didn't have the right sort of gear to wear, it was outside, it was at night, it was cold and wet um, in Huddersfield. And uh, so I had to borrow some clothing from my boss, who he was going to show me how it all worked yeah. basically and I'm five foot six and he's over he was over six foot you oh. know and he had so I was wearing a, a, an anorak of his which came down to my <laughs> mid calf and his Wellington boots he was size 11 feet and oh, I God. certainly haven't got those and so I was having to control the clothing and look competent yeah. and professional and yeah. all the rest of it so it was a little bit <laughs> challenging. Wow. What is it what is it about you you say it's a puzzle there are some people love puzzles some people hate <laughs> puzzles um Essentially, looking at what you've done and how you've cracked so many of these cold cases, it's the fact that you, having initially thought, what am I going to do with this, what has happened here, is you won't give up. No, I am, <laughs> I am very determined about things. But I think the thing, thing of it is that it is very interesting and it's a puzzle. And the other thing is that there's a really good reason for wanting to do it. It's all about you know, finding someone who might be responsible, particularly for a scene like that, and making sure that they can't do it again and they're brought to justice, and brought to justice not only for themselves, but, but for the victim and the victim's family and all of that. And that sense of fairness and justice has been with me well ever since I was a child, and my mum kind of instilled it into all of us. Mm. She used to say, um, if we'd done something, you know, <laughs> not quite as, you know, a little unpleasant, she would say, well, you know, you've got to think about what you've done. You think about, you know, the person who's, you know, who might have been a bit sensitive about that. You know, was that really the right thing to do? So I've got all that running as a constant tape in the back of my head, I suppose, and, mm. and it's all to do with that as well, I think. And there must be, therefore, great satisfaction when some evidence that you've gathered or discovered is then used in court and that murder is convicted of something <clears throat> they thought they would have otherwise got away with. Yes, uh, um, absolutely. I couldn't, I couldn't say otherwise. But, of course, it, we don't make any decisions. As you say, it's the court that mm. decides. Here's all of the evidence. Forensic science is usually only a part of it. And, and they decide whether or not they're, they're guilty. But it is, there is a sense of satisfaction. And I would say that 
as you're beginning, as you're on the track um, looking for something and you begin to uncover things, there's a sense there that, well, this looks like I may have found a way in. I'm mm. looking as if I'm mm. finding something here. And there's something that keeps you going. Because quite a lot of it's boring and tedious and all the other things you can imagine. And you have to keep going through those sorts of barriers. Yeah. But it's this thought that just round the next corner, or I think I'm on to something which keeps you But also yeah, the, 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 the satisfaction of someone who thinks they've got away with it. Um, and then years down the line, yes. perhaps, uh, and perhaps technology improved or yeah. has improved, yes. then suddenly you think, oh, I've got you. I don't necessarily think I've got you, but, you know, I there think... There must have been a moment where adjacent. Thought, I've got you. Yeah, or something adjacent to that. But I think the other thing is, too, that I think we sometimes... Well, people may tend to forget, is that it's not just about providing evidence that might then go on and convict someone, but it's actually exonerating someone. Yeah. Yes, you know, sometimes the at the side. same time, yeah. but who has been suspected. It's so. utterly fascinating, yeah. and thank you so much. ITVX, Cold Case Forensics, it's all there now. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.